Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Rich Raw 3. Hope you're all doing good, hope you're all well, guys. Well, it's now Monday, we're into a new year, guys. Hope you enjoy this year, hope you had a good year last year, hope you had a good New Year's Eve. I just want to take this moment, guys, to thank all you subscribers, all your view, all my viewers, all the likes you've given me, all the comments I've had from you guys. You're keeping me going, guys. I love doing this. It gives me a sense of well-being when I've done a video and I get views on it and likes on it. I just wanted to take this time, guys, to thank you so much for supporting me, for viewing my content and subscribing for you people who are subscribing. Now, guys, I've only got 8% of all the views I'm having subscribed, so there's another 91% of you out there who are not subscribed. Please smash that subscribe button if you watch my videos, guys, and give it a big like. would really appreciate that. But for you guys who are subscribing, even you guys who are not subscribing but watching my videos, I really do appreciate it, guys. Really do. Well, that's enough kiss ass in there. We're into 2023, and this is the first Titanic issue of 2023, guys. So, yeah, it's Monday. It's the Titanic build from Ashit Parkworks, and we're at issue, issue 36. I know I should remember, guys. You know what I'm like. I know it was only last week when we did issue 35. But yeah, guys, it's issue 36 of Ashit Parkworks, Build the Titanic. Now, just to let you know, guys, there's 140 issues of this, and we're now on 36. So we've got another 104 issues. I was working out talking to my family the other day. You're talking around roughly two years until this build is done. Now, if you want to come along with me, guys, and watch this build and see the result in two years' time, I know it's a big commitment, but you ain't got to pay, obviously, nothing. Just click that subscribe button. Press the bell notification, you'll get notified every time I put this build up, guys. Whether it's the Titanic or any other builds on my channel. Take a look through the playlist if you're new to the channel. See if anything floats you about, as I say. And if so, guys, please subscribe, bell notification not to miss out. And please give us a big like for when you've watched the video. That would really be grateful as it helps grow the channel and just gets me about there, guys, so other people can see the video also. But without further ado, we're going to crack on with the Titanic build from Ashit Parkworks, issue 36. Issue 36 of Build the Titanic from Ashit Parkworks. Right, I've got a pretty big part in here by the looks of it, guys, but we'll come to that in a sec. What we'll do is take a look through this week's mag. Issue 36, guys, have 140 issues. We're getting in a row now with this. We've still got a long way to go, but we're getting in a row. Right, before we crack on, coming in issue 37, we've got the transmission box, electric motor case and base. This is gonna pop in the next couple of weeks. What we're gonna be seeing is the engine, what we've built, these two engines here, which have been in the last few issues. We're gonna be seeing these work. It's gonna be in the, the flooring of the, the engine room with the mechanism as, as well guys what's going to obviously be more moving parts so it's going to be really exciting i'm really looking forward to it right back to the mag we've got all the usual content here and then we get straight in to what we're doing this week we've got the steam turbine and we're going to be building that by the looks of it and then this is the exciting bit guys this is actually the the engine room floor we're going to be putting parts onto the engine room floor and then by the looks of it, without looking too much into it, we are putting the engines on to the engine room floor. So this is a busy one this week again, guys. I did say that the other week, I think it was last week, met the most of the quiet weeks because then we're going to go right into it. But you can see by looking at these instructions, 
we're prepping this guys for next week i think we'll be next week where we're going to see everything starting to move and and take its place so yeah we've got 12 instructions guys that is going to be the finished result at the bottom of this page this is getting huge this is massive but guys without further ado i'm going to crack on with this build and see what we've got to do right so we've got the box here of this week's parts what we'll do is we'll take these out wow <laughs> very busy this week very busy so if i get these out of the box and then we'll go through right, so if i pull these to one side well i do i hope you had a new year a good new year guys i really do but we're, we're up and running now we're into the new year i know we're only a day into it it's monday 2nd of january but yeah let's crack on with this year guys and go as we mean to go on right so what i'm going to do is take one part out at a time and you know the score oh, there's loads of pops in there i'll tell you what they are and then we'll build them in a sec right so first of all we've got 36b which this is plastic and that is the steam pipe A. I'm going to just put them at the top of the table for now and then in a minute I'll move them back to the side. We've got 36G. Which is that part. Again, this is plastic, guys. 36G is the steam pipe C. And then we've got 36C and H. They look like little hammers, basically, those do. So that's 36C and H, that's steam pipe B and steam pipe D. Right, so we want to put these in order there. As you can see, I've put the steam pipes just at the top right of the screen there. Not sure if I've got them in the right order, but we'll come to that as we're going through, through the build. We'll rectify it by then. The way they wrap these these items, guys, it's it's really cool to be fair. You can tell it's a prestige model and they want to look after the parts we get. Right, let me just take all these out. Remember to give us a like guys at the end of the video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Really appreciate that. Right. So we'll take this big baby here. This is plastic. And this is 36i, which is the central turbine. Again, I'll put them to the right of the screen and I'm easy to get to as we're doing the build. And we've got 36D and F. So D is the condenser port side and F is the condenser starboard. Again, I'll sort these items out in a second as we go through the instructions. This is all about just showing you what parts we've got. And then we've got 36E, which is the turbine base. Again, all these parts are plastic, guys. And then we've got this big piece here, which is plastic. 36A, that's the engine room floor section, the stern. Oh, the smell of this, the newness of it, guys, is beautiful. There's just something about building models when you can smell the newness of it. Right, that's me gabbling. Let's crack on with this build. Instruction one, it's saying take the turbine 36i, which is that part, this part here, and then it's telling us to turn it around that way. And we'll put that on the, the table there. And it's saying... Take the two condensers, 36D and 36F. Which are these two parts here. And then now it's wanting us to position them like this diagram here, where it's circled blue. And R are marked on the condenser to help you identify the left port and the right starboard condensers. Fit the condensers onto each side of the turbine so that the screw holes are aligned. Fix the condensers in place using two AP screws. Yeah, because we've got AP screws this week, guys, and EM screws. 
Do excuse my voice, I don't know if I'm coming down with something, but I've got a bit of a croaky voice this week. I'm drinking lots of water, but it's not working too well. Right, so you can tell which uh, is the right side as well by looking at the diagram here. You've got like a little hole on this side and you can't see the hole on there. So I would have thought that's going to be on the left side and that's going to be on the right side and the holes are underneath. So if we just position those there like so, and then what it's saying do is attach it to these raised pieces of plastic. Now, if it's the right way, it should fit flush like that. I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah. And then you've got two holes here where we're going to be putting the AP screws in to connect it. So we'll get two AP screws out. Right, so we've got the AP screw out. And then it should be simple as pushing that hole and screw it in. Yeah, I keep wondering what's going to be in store this year through 2023. There's a lot more builds I want to bring to the channel, guys. But for, I think, the first six months of this year, I'm going to be just sticking to what I'm doing at the minute. These builds I've got. Um, who knows? I don't know if you've um, watched World of Wayne. But he did a message last Christmas Eve. Um, and basically, the news is Fan Home are doing all the Bond cars. Now, I've been waiting for this. I really have. I'm a real Bond fan. And guess what? I am going to be doing one of those Bond cars. I really want to do um, the DB5. I'd love to do every one, but I'm not going to commit to that as yet. Um, cause obviously, they're very expensive to build. But I do. I would love to build all of them, obviously. <laughs> I'd love to bring them to the channel. But through Hell and Water, I'm going to be bringing the DB5 build to the channel as soon as it's available, guys. I've got to do that for myself. And obviously, I want to bring you guys along with me to do it. I think from what Fan Arm have said, which is where you can get the build from. I think it's Fan Arm. I'm sure it was Fan Arm. I've only watched it once. I watched it last Christmas Eve and a lot's happened since then. Is it Fan Arm? Summer. Summertime, they're out. I'd have to double check that, guys. I'll let you know by the end of the video. I'm sure it's Fan Arm. No, my bad. It's not fan arm. It's Agora models. Guys, I switched off them for a couple of seconds just to check that because I didn't want to give you the un, um, wrong information and mis mislead you. I had a quick look at Will the Wayne. Check it out, though, guys. Check Will the Wayne out. He's brilliant. He's the one who, not personally, but after watching Will the Wayne, he's the one who made me think, I want to do that. I want to make models, etc. And he got me into doing this, really. My personal opinion, obviously. But check it out, guys. Will the Wayne. So yeah, it's Agora models. You can get um, the Bond cars, I think, late next summer or summer 2023. So I'm looking forward to that. Right, back to this building, guys. Instruction two, fit the D-shaped peg on steam pipe 36H into the hole in steam pipe 36G. Right, so this is 36G. And then we've got 36H here. Basically, it's just a push fit connection. Um, as you can see, you've got the D-shape there. There's no glue required for this. And it does seem a very tight fit, to be fair. And that's in, as simple as that. So that's that done. And we've got to do the same again with 36 uh, 36C and 36B, which are these parts here. This is 36, let me just double check. I don't want to give you the wrong instructions. 36C. Yeah, that's right. And this is 36B. All plastic, this is, guys. And you can't go wrong. As long as you look at the D-shape there and make sure it goes in. It can only go in one way. And that's as easy as that. And so those two parts done. And then instruction three. The assembled steam pipes have to be fitted to the assembly from step one, which is this, this piece here. Fit the pegs. On the ends of the pipes 36b 36c 36h 36g so basically what we're saying here 
is these two parts we've done, well, four parts, should I say four pieces, have got to be connected to this part, what we've just previously done in instruction one. So if we turn this around that way, you've got two holes there and one hole on either side. I would have thought they'll only go in one way, but we've got to make sure we position them uh, the right way, if that makes sense. So if we twist those around like so, as you can see as well, because these are pointing the right way they've got to be. And there's no glue required in these either guys. You've just got to basically push them in. Just take it easy not to snap because it is only plastic. Push them in like that. That's that side done. Because if you, it's easy enough, guys, if you can see the holes there and the way that's positioned, you obviously couldn't put them in that way because it just wouldn't look right and it wouldn't be right. So you just line them up with the holes and gently push them in like so. And that is so far up to instruction three, done. And I've just double checked that guys, they were the wrong way around. They'll still fit in, but you've got to twist them around the other way. As you can see how those are sticking up like that. These right angles, you bend, whatever you want to call them. Basically that was on that side, that was on that side. So there was pointing downwards like that. You want them upwards like that. But I'll make the mistake guys, so you can't. <laughs> you probably won't make a mistake. You're probably better than me at doing it, but yeah, that's how they're supposed to look. But I thought I'd just flag that up for you, just in case you're thinking, oh, hang on, that don't look right. If you follow me along with this build, I've rectified it, guys. Sorry about that. But yeah, I'm at these mistakes, so you guys don't. But that's how they're supposed to look. And if you look at the diagram just at the bottom right of the screen, that's identical. So yeah, that is instruction three done. So let's turn the page. Right, so now... What's this important advice? I'll just read this important advice. We now start to work fitting the testing um, and testing the two reciprocating engines. It is important to ensure that all parts are correctly fitted at each stage. Check that your model matches the photos exactly. Uh, you must handle model parts very carefully as there are many delicate parts that can easily come adrift. Work in clear area. We suggest you cover the work surface with an old sheet so that you can easily see smaller parts. Right, we're back to the smaller parts then guys. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna just get the, yeah, the engine rim floor. Okay then, so now instruction four is saying take the engine rim floor 26H, which is this part here from a few issues ago. And we did these parts a few issues as well. Check it out guys in the playlist. If you wanna watch me build those very fiddly, that was but cool and thrust block assembly from issue 34. Yes, yeah, so we've got all that. Um, and we've got to fit the turbine base 36E, which is this part here, plastic. And we've got to put that to the floor and fit it with three screws. Yeah, so basically this has got to be this way around guys. And you've got these three holes in the engine floor there that fits on flush like that and you can see easy as that and we've got to use three ap screws now just be careful guys when you do this obviously don't put that on your desk because you're going to end up damaging the small parts so what i'm going to try and do is do it this way holding the part like that because i think if, obviously if i tip that up these are going to get damaged very delicate so i'm going to do this way We'll just say do it this way around. There we go. Nice and tight. Guys, this build is starting to get huge now. I mean, I don't think the camera work does it justice, but it's getting absolutely massive. And this is just like, it ain't even a quarter, <laughs> quarter of the size yet. It's gonna be cool. Right, so. As you can see, those screws there are nice and tight, and that's fitted nice and flush. 
And after fitting that part 36E, that is instruction four done. Right now, instruction five, fit the three recessed screw sockets on the aft end of the upper side of the floor part 36A. 36A of the screw sockets on the underside of the engine room floor 26H, which is this part. So, story short, we're connecting this 36A. So, let's just turn this over. Now, it should all fit into place, I would have thought. Which way does that have to go? says there we go like that guys it's even off camera now it's getting that big <laughs> it's absolutely huge right i'm going to get some more ap screws to connect that together okay so i've got the ap screws ready and again i'm not going to put it on the table i'm going to try and hold it and then screw these screws in because i do not want to damage anything on the upper side of the engine floor. And as you can see, I think by the video, this is plastic, so just be careful you don't damage it in any way. It's the middle screw in. Oh, I'm very shaky hands, guys, because I'm getting a bit nervous now. If, this build not damaging it but I do love it I'm enjoying every second of it there we go put that in there please give us a like as well guys after the video and subscribe if you're not already would really appreciate that right so those three AP screws are in and look at that look at the size of that now it's just about in shot <laughs> this is absolutely huge guys but that is it for instruction five. So if I just bring that over here, put that over there a sec, and we'll read what we've got to do in instruction six. Now this is where it gets not difficult, but important we get it right now, guys. We don't want to put them in the wrong way. And you know what I'm like sometimes putting things on the wrong way with one of the engines, say no more. Anyway, <laughs> instruction six. In the next steps, you will have to fix the two reciprocating engines on the floor of the engine room before proceeding. Make sure the engine has been assembled correctly in the particular. Check that there is no gap between the feet of the columns and the catwalk around the base of the engine. If there is a gap, you've got to correct it. And I think I did that the other week. It's easy done, guys. Easy to make that mistake. Right, so let's get the engine out. Right. I'm going to go by the instructions. You've got the port engine, which is this one, if you can see. So I'm going to keep that on the left, because that's how it's on the diagram. And then you've got the starboard engine, which is this one. Well, I'm questioning myself now. I think it's this one. It's got to be. Okay, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, that's the starboard engine. Right, so what I've done, I've just checked, because it's saying, make sure the feet of the columns, there is no gap. Now, as you can see, there's no gap. So that engine is ready to be connected. You've got to be very careful, guys, this is how flimsy all these little parts are. And then secondly, I checked these columns, the feet, no gap. Yeah, so that's good to go. Right, and now instruction seven. Let's just move this to the one side. It says here, if there is a gap in the base of the columns, turn the engine upside down and remove the FM screws. That is yellow above. Place on one side so that you can use them to replace the base. Remove the IP screws, the white circles, and place to one side, taking care not to move and confuse them with the FM screws. Right, okay. Remove the base and check the orientation of the piece. 3P. The 
support engine or 29H, which is this part here. This is getting very confusing, isn't it, guys? Sorry if I've lost you. There is a small hump on this piece which must be positioned at the rear of the assembly next to the flywheel. If it is in the wrong position, middle or right, remove the screws and turn it around, fixing it to the place again with the same screws below right. Okay, using the same screws and the base column should be flush with the catwalk. Now I think we've got it right then, because there is no issue with the feet, there really isn't. As you can see, dare I say that, <laughs> yeah, they are flush. So I think everything is okay. Also guys, before we go any further, instruction eight is saying, make sure you've got the diameter right on the, the flywheels, which are right obviously on this one, well not obviously, I could have got them wrong. But as you can see there, that is thicker than the one inside nearest to the crank. Just double check guys, if you're building this along with me, You've got those the right way around because I think if you got those wrong, you can see that thicker diameter than the one inside. If you got those wrong, you're gonna have a lot of issues. Right, so back to putting them onto the the engine floor. What it's saying do, guys, I'm running out of room. <laughs> Let's have a read of instruction nine. One, you have completed all these checks. Same one there, I'm sure you say it's once. It's got one, but once, one, whatever. When you have completed all these checks, take the port reciprocating engine and place it onto the floor of the engine room 26H, which is this just at the top of the screen. Uh, raise screw sockets on the base of the engine fit into the recessed screw at the holes of the floor. And there are central pegs at each to help you ensure they uh, fit correctly. Cover the flywheel to fit against the open end of the thrust block. Secure the reciprocating engine into place with EM screws. Right. Right, so you can tell um, you've got the right engine. Could it say we need the port? All right, yeah, the port reciprocating engine. Both engines have got these big pipes on here. But if you look, guys, if you just want to make sure, make sure this pipe's facing towards you and then the, the flywheel should be to the left and you'll know you've got the right one. Right, so here goes. What we've got to do is gently push these into the holes. And that should go into the thrust block. Oops, the drop into the holes. Ooh, there's things popping and cracking. Hey okay, guys, that will go in. The engine does go in, as you can see by the diagram, but you've just got to be careful and give it a little bit of a push without damaging anything, but it, it is a bit of a um, moment, that thing, is it gonna go in or not? Yeah, but I got it in. So now we need four EM screws, and basically now we've got to tighten the port engine onto the engine floor. Now this is gonna be a work of art without me dropping it, but also getting it on camera for you guys and damaging any of the small parts on the engine, which obviously I don't want to do. So, there's four all together. So what I'm gonna do is start them off and then tighten them up once they're all in. Do excuse my voice, guys, very croaky. <laughs> I think I'm coming down with something. Hopefully not, I'll keep cracking on. Let's so get another EM screw. You start to worry now, thinking, oh, is it gonna work? Is the engine gonna work when it's all put together? You start doubting yourself, which you can't do that, obviously. You can't doubt yourself doing things like this. Let's see if I've got a bite on that. See, when you start screwing them in, 
it's going to pull them down to the, the engine floor anyway. And then theoretically, it should all be into place where it should be. These have got to be tight as you can get them, guys. Don't be sure to tighten them, just tighten them as much as you can. Let's just move this around here a sec. So many little parts that you keep catching. tight as you can because you don't want them working loose when the the mechanism's working right so that is the port engine in you can see that's all done this is huge <laughs> it's so difficult to get on camera that's all done and now you've guessed it we're going to be doing the starboard engine next and those are the em screws in there guys Okay guys, as a simple piece just to put onto the floor engine floor, that has been a nightmare. Please just take your time guys. I mean, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I've lost one of the engine valves as I was screwing it into the engine floor. The floor, <laughs> engine floor, I think that's what it's called. I've just bent that one. So I had to apply a little bit of glue. And at first, so you're supposed to connect the shaft and it works and hello, let's have a look. It's working now, but that wasn't working earlier and I had to fiddle about with it. The crankshaft there, the, what, what's it called? Let me see what it's called. Flywheel. The flywheel there, that diameter there is too big to go into these thrust box. Um, so I think it's supposed to sit right just by the side of it. Oh, that was a fiddly, stressful time to do that. But as you can see, it's working now. Twisting that around. But it seems to stick and then go again. Well, that's because once the engine's in, it will be a lot more powerful and it will do it, we'll see. Um, but now we're going to fit this one, this engine on here, should I say, which is the starboard engine. Let's hope that's a bit easier. Okay, so now we're putting the port engine, starboard engine. Yeah, I'm using, losing the will to live now, guys. <laughs> this is more fiddly than I thought. So what we have to do is make sure that's the right way around, flywheel, and basically, well, I'll say basically, it should be as simple as putting into the holes and then tightening the, the screws. Now this one's gone in a lot easier, I think. Yeah, that's just, that's just gone in as simple as that. That is ridiculous, eh? That's gone in easy and the other one ain't. I can't understand why that's done that. Right. I've absolutely had a mare with that other engine. So now what you do is you tighten the EM, EM screws in as tight as you can tighten. Um, to connect this starboard engine but it's more fiddly than it looks because you've got nowhere to hold the engine as you're putting pressure on to turn the screws to, to screw it in because there's that many little parts and you do not want to damage anything as I've just done I mean these little valves man they're so easy to damage so you've got to be careful guys we're nearly there. Do these really tight because you don't need engine moving. Oh, I'm gutted that I've broke one of them valves to be fair. But there's nothing I can do now. Just got to crack on with it. Right, so. Right, so that is the both engines attached to the engine floor. And uh, we need to get the other rod and check, see if these work. And when you do this, guys, you've got to have the narrowest side. You've got two sides, as you can see. You want the narrowest side going in to the thrust block. And then get it in the flywheel. 
Do you know what? I've got a feeling this one's going to be a lot easier than the other one. But it worries me, you know, that it's stiff to turn the engine. And I'm just hoping that the, the motors, when we apply those, they're going to be strong enough to turn them. I mean, I can't understand what's going on here. There you go. It's working. As you can see. Alright, so that's working. So that is up to instruction 11 done. But if I do say so myself, that looks very impressive. I'm just praying that whenever we fit the, uh, the engine, it works. <laughs> And now guys, for instruction 12, what it's saying do now is apply, let me get my tweezers, um, 32i and 34e into the holes in the base columns as shown with the tweezers. So, story short, it's these parts here guys. These little tubes, they've got to be put into the little holes and then it doesn't say glue them in. But I think I'm going to put a, a little bit of glue there. Because they don't attach exactly right in, as you can see. So I'm going to dab a little bit of glue. And then that is those parts done. So, let get the glue out, guys. And then what I'm going to do is apply a little bit of glue just there. Get that in focus so that stays out and not on the other engine and that'll be done. And for this week guys, issue 36, harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, a bit more fiddly and difficult to get these engines working. I really do hope I haven't got to take these engines apart. They was working fine until I've put them on the engine floor. Guys, if you're building this and you, you, you're struggling with the same issues, comment down below guys. If you've got any tips or anything to tell me if I've done something wrong. I mean, I've double, triple checked the engine. They're all the right way around, except with the pistons. So I can't see it being that. I'm just praying when we put the engine, the motors on in the next couple of issues, whenever that'll be, they'll have enough power to turn on, fingers crossed. But yeah, that is it for issue 36, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Give us a big like and subscribe for more. That is it for this week's Titanic build from Asher Parkworks, guys. Issue 36. Do hope you enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed, smash that subscribe button. Press the bell notification not to miss out on any future videos. And please, guys, give us a big like after you've watched the video. This week, as you've just seen, um, the engine room has started to take shape now. We've got to store the turbines for a later issue. But it's, it's starting to look cool now, guys. It's starting to take shape. I mean, it's absolutely massive just the engine room alone. And I think without looking into the, the diagrams of this build, that's only just under a quarter of this massive, amazing build, guys. This this is gonna be over a meter long in length. It's huge. I ain't got a clue where I'm gonna put it. As you can see, this at the minute is where I'm doing my YouTubing. But as I've said before, in future months, I'm gonna to have to start sorting this um, makeshift studio out, guys. and maybe have bigger shelving, a bigger desk, because with this and the Millennium Falcon, just to name but a few, I'm running out of room to put things in, I'm running out of room to build them, because as this Titanic progresses and gets bigger, it's gonna obviously be harder to put on this little desk I've got here. But that's what my channel's about, guys. It's about evolving, adding things to the channel, etc. All for you guys. Please subscribe, bell notification, big like. Appreciating all the support you're giving me, guys subscribers non-subscribers any of the viewers i really appreciate you guys love you lots i know that sounds a bit cheesy but i'm going to leave it there now guys see you later peace